Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my review of Debian 9, which is codenamed Stretch, a Linux distro that has been over one year in the making. Well, yes, it is uh, quite a slow release time for Debian. They are certainly not bleeding edge, about as far from the bleeding edge as you can get, but hey, that is great for anyone who doesn't want to upgrade their system all the time, great for servers. The stock desktop is GNOME 3.22, and memory usage is fairly high, and I've allocated this machine four CPU cores. Now it does leave me with a little problem here with uh, this new CPU. Performance is going to be quite a bit different to what you've seen in my previous distro reviews. Not much I can really do about that, but things will certainly seem a lot more snappy. So there's six different official flavours of Debian. We have Cinnamon, Gnome, KD, LXD, Mate and XFCE as well as net install, which you can choose whatever you want to put on the system. There's quite a few different supported architectures. You've got the usual 64 and 32 bit, as well as a few different ARM based CPUs. What's new in the distribution? Well, there's going to be too much to cover really, because uh, over one year between the two distros, I would not really remember all the differences. MariaDB has replaced MySQL, and you have quite a few version increases on the default applications. Interesting that they install Inkscape as default. So scrolling through this, and I can see one mistake they have made, or not a mistake, one item they have missed off the list, that you can now install Snap-based applications. Although you do have to install the Snap-D daemon. Snap-find, well that is a bit of a short list. <laughs> there should be a lot more than that. Snap to the package management that Ubuntu have been driving, that it allows sandboxing and install of all dependencies of a specific application, and one that I have installed is an application called Vector. Not exactly particularly fast to start up if I compare it to something like Inkscape, which they are effectively the same sort of application. You can see Inkscape started a little bit faster. And I still prefer the layout of Inkscape, though I have to say that uh, Vector does seem a bit too simplified to me, but anyway, that is a point about a specific application, not a point about the distro itself. It was just one snap I decided to try out because I already had VLC on the system. Well, I installed that myself. I'm not sure that Debian would really allow such a thing by default with their choice of, uh, hmm, how do we call it? Keeping non-free open source software out of the system. I know VLC is an open source application, but they do contain uh, the ability to read patent encumbered codecs. I did make a bit of a change on the software to allow non-free. It was just a case of going into Snaptic and ticking the box non-free. But there are other ways of doing it via the command line. Or downloading a variant of Debian, which does allow such a thing. So you'll notice I'm not really going on about the desktop here. What is the point? I've covered GNOME in the past, it's not the newest version. Performance is difficult to tell because while it's going very quick here, it's obviously quite a lot quicker than my old CPU. I don't really have anything to benchmark this, and you'll notice I am using VirtualBox for this review. No hiding that at this point. But we have GNOME 3.22.3, .3, so that is already lagging behind. The current version of GNOME is already one major release higher at 3.24. The default layout of the desktop only allows you to split applications for the half screens. It doesn't allow quarters by default. Oh well. I know you can enable that feature, but it's more just I'm pointing that out. You have your default folder locations already set. Looks like the default icon set, which really does look pretty ugly that. Well, that is just my opinion. Settings, well, that's just about the stock quantity of settings, isn't it, really? Anything on the backgrounds? Uh, a few different ones. You'll notice it's narrow scroll bars by default. Pretty easy to pick that up and move it, though. Yeah, no such trouble at all with that. I can't remember which distro it was. I did have a little bit of trouble with that, but yeah. No problems in Debian. Let's open up LibreOffice. Yeah, still reasonably quick to open. And that's the first time opening it on this boot up. About LibreOffice. <laughs> Again, this is a little bit behind already. But this is what we have to expect out of Debian. We have to wait a long time for the system to be built up, tested, bug fixed, 
so you know what you're getting here is going to be very stable. I haven't had one single crash. I can't even tell you what the crash dialog box looks like. So that's the graphical software installer from GNOME. The applications, so take a look at the full list. I've installed a few applications on here, but let's take a look through what we have. So we have Firefox extended support release for the web browser, a few different games, Inkscape, full of suite of LibreOffice, a few more small games, Rhythmbox for the audio player, sound recorder, Totem for the video player, and I installed VLC for as part of my testing. Utilities, they got the tweak tool installed. So you can install some extensions onto the system and really customize it and make it what you want. Or you could just leave it as is and use the stock GNOME desktop. Whatever you want to do there, it is entirely your choice with what you would do with your system. And the last application I'm going to open is the weather and I just can't believe how much the temperature is going to plummet by Saturday. Literally that is half the temperature it was today. But that is me just being a typical British person and talking about the weather. So overall, Debian has been absolutely rock solid, stable, as I would expect, and nice and fast on responsiveness. Well, thanks for watching. See you all later.